I wanted to look at um, some of the tools that we've developed to actually help us in our in our link migrations or link expansions. Um, there are automated tools such as PowerShell scripts for enabling a lot of features and functions, for example, moving users or enabling voice or enabling different voice policies, for example. The problem is with those is it does require a certain knowledge on the, the user administrator to be able to use those tools. Now, one of the things I find that's uh, not generally used or generally deployed in a lot of our uh, deployments is the ability to um, leverage these scripts from Active Directory. So let me show you what I mean. So firstly, I'm going to show you what's involved in Link uh, in enabling a user for a pool. So we've got our control panel here. This is Link 2010, but it's just as applicable to 2013. And what I'm going to do is enable a user for Link. So we have to fire up our Link control panel. We have to click on Enable Users. And we need to find our user. Now I know that I've got a user in here somewhere called Derek. So I'm going to find him. There we are. Click OK. We have to choose the pool that I'm going to assign him to. We're going to say pool 1. I'm going to specify what uh, SIP URI needs to do and then change all these policies down here. So once I've done all that, click Enable. That user will go off and will be enabled for Link. Now that's great. Um, apart from the fact that it's in its own administration tool um, and you, know, you need to know how to use that tool, whereas you know, a lot of administrators will be used to using Active Directory users and computers to drive their user administration. So obviously having multiple tools, multiple processes, compli complicates the process and of course um, anything that complicates means that you can, you can introduce mistakes and you can slow down the rate of adoption of such technologies. So let's have a look at other options. So what we've done is we've developed tools that actually extend the functions of Active Directory users and computers. So let me show you what I mean. I'm going to fire up Active Directory users and computers. It's in here. There we go. And I'm going to show you how we can use mm -hmm. these tools direct from this, this, um, this plugin to actually enable users or migrate users or enable for voice. So for example, we've already enabled Derek there, but on Rodney, we can actually extend the functions of um, this tool to include some link elements. So for example there, we've got enable for pool one, enable for pool two, enable for voice, for example, which would turn on and configure all the telephony options. Uh, there's an option to disable for enterprise voice, for example, which would turn off all your voice options. So if we wanted to create a new user, for example, and get them enabled for link, we do a new user. There we go. We'll call this um, Andy Pandy. There we go. Give him a password. I'm going to give him an email address as well. Now, rather than us having to now jump into the link administration tools, what we can do is right click on Andy and say enable for pool one. It'll go off, do some stuff, and it'll enable that user for us. So if we now pop in back into the control panel, we can find our users, and what we should see in there is we've now enabled Andy Pandy. So even just using that very small plugin, very small piece of scripting, we've made the administrator's life a lot easier because they can do their user administration from one place. Same for example if they wanted to now enable Andy for voice. Well what we'd have to do for Andy is give him a telephone number. I'm going to make that up. So as long as he's got a telephone number we can do this. Click OK. We can right click Andy and now enable him for enterprise voice. And what that will do, that will go off and configure all the voice options. Now, the options that I've included on this menu are a, a subset of what they could be. The trick is to work out what your administrators are doing, what they're doing repeatedly, and what is slowing down, slowing down their workflow, or introducing errors to their workflow. So, for example, a, a common one with enabling enterprise voice, for example, are getting extension numbers wrong, um, getting direct DDI numbers can correct, that sort of stuff. So by automating it, you can reduce those mistakes and increase the productivity of the administrator. So these sort of extensions, they're not just applicable for users either. So for example, you can see here 
that I have a group called Migrated Site. And what those Migrated Site group could have in it are any user, for example, that has been moved from one uh, site or location to another. Now, depending on how your topology is configured, you then may want to change their site configuration. So you may want uh, different voice policies applying, for example. Well, you can do all this from within the, uh, the link control panel, or you can do it from within PowerShell scripts. But with a bit of planning and a bit of forethought, you can actually do all this kind of um, user management all within a single tool. So for example here, if I right click on the migrated site, you'll see that I have some link specific options now, such as enable everybody in that group for pool one, enable them for pool two, I can disable enterprise voice, I can migrate users to uh, a different pool, for example. So by putting some effort into this tool, you can increase the productivity of you, your administrators because they don't have to be jumping around in different tools and, and different uh, areas of your infrastructure to achieve what they want. You can also reduce the number of errors that are introduced to your, um, to your infrastructure, certainly with things like directory listings and things like that, which of course has an effect on the number of support calls that you get. But in addition, you can actually speed up your workflow of user adoption. So, for example, if you're taking on a site by site, you can actually configure um, the system to actually be able to do a lot of that all those automated processes for you, such as enabling them for link, assigning the right voice policy, assigning the right external access policy, and all those sort of things. So I hope you can take from this the fact that automating these processes is very much the way to go. In general, if you find your administrators are doing the same thing repeatedly with a definable outcome and they're not automating it, they're doing it wrong. Um, it'll introduce errors and of course it will just slow down productivity. So as you can see a lot of the tools we've developed and the way that we deploy our, our uh, topologies is purely designed in a way to actually make that, make that deployment as simple and as accurate as possible.